It's Grey Cup Week, and we've got you covered. Everything you need ahead of Grey Cup 107 in Calgary from the best insiders and analysts in the game. Now, from inside our Grey Cup studio, it's Rod Peterson. Hello, welcome to the Rod Peterson Show uh, for this Wednesday, November the 20th. And Canadian sports fans around the globe, this is the rollout, our opening segment for Flooring Superstores. I am the host, Rod Peterson, as the sign says. He's the co-host, Darren Dupont. How are you, doing? Good morning. I'm great. It's like I'm cheese and you're crackers. <laughs> a little crunchy, a little you're salty. Crackers. Yeah, a little salty. Uh, Going to be a great show as it is day three of our Grey Cup week coverage. Got a lot of CFL greats coming up on the program today. Uh, Sean Lemon of the BC Lions, their star defensive lineman, will be with us to make his Grey Cup pick. He was 2-0 and on division final weekend. Uh, the Lemonator will be joining us from Orlando, Florida today to talk about the 107th Grey Cup matchup. Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Hamilton Tiger Cats. Ryder great, the legendary Roger Aldag will be with us right in the bunker. He is the Ryder's uh, record holder for career games played, is he not? No. Gene Did Gene pass him? Gene well, Gene. then he's number two. Gene he's right up there. The legendary number 44, Ryder's uh, retiring his number 44. Raj will be here in the bunker. Derek Dennis of the Calgary Stampeders will be with us. Their star left tackle. Looking forward to that. And we're going to talk a little Saskatchewan rush as their season is at hand. Jeff Shatler, he's here in the bunker on the couch. Number 77 will be joining us a little later on in hour one. And some guests from the Regina Rebels because hockey fights cancer. Did you know it's hockey fights cancer week? Yeah. And it's the last your game for both the Pac Canadians and the Rebels on Saturday. Uh, Regina Minor Hockey, Hockey Regina is the first Saskatchewan Minor Hockey Association to jump on board with Hockey Fights Cancer. So we're going to talk about that. My niece, Sydney Peterson's coming in. So I'm ah, looking nice. forward to interviewing and, her. Uh, forward Nina Brick of the Rebels, her birthday today. So happy birthday, Nina. Fantastic. It's actually John Chick's birthday day, too. Oh, want to hey, get right down to it. Well, thank, thank God for the Facebook notifications. Right. <laughs> That's exactly what yeah. I live off of. Um, it is episode number 119. So we will be honoring number 19s on the program today and i've written down a few any come to mind for you guys yeah joe sackick stevie wise stevie oh, i got it right i joe had Thornton. steve Eisenman. i i had steve azerman down but i didn't have joe sackick <laughs> who was was that clinton bill clinton was that yeah. clinton yeah i'd like to hand you the tro the trophy here steve azerman <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you think they'd print Thornton. them on that Joe Thornton, Joe Jumbo Thornton, Joe. Bo Levi Mitchell Bo. for our Calgary viewers yeah. today. Bo Levi, uh, Jamie Heward, of course, for us Pats ah, fans. Oh, I was go. at the Pats game last night. Tight one. <sighs> Two one Pats loss. Yeah, and they're home tonight to the Calgary Hitmen. Wasn't a great game, but I saw my friends and had a hot dog. I was going to say, how were the hot dogs? And that was the main thing. Um, You're really focused on the losing thirty pounds thing. <laughs> yeah, I stayed away from uh, all you can eat hot dogs. Okay, last good, night. good. So a couple things. One, I said that yesterday we were we ran the dual polls for Capital Auto Mall, Universal Collision Center, who's the GM of the year in both the East Division and the West Division of the CFL. Hamilton's tandem of Drew Alamang and Sean Burke won out of the East. Jeremy O'Day won out of the West for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and it wasn't even close. 80 yeah percent plus and that's why i'm bringing it up because uh, myers doesn't even agree with that i obviously my idea was to have an east winner and a west winner put them together today of it's not even going to be close it would be jeremy o'day so why waste our time on that poll so we'll come up with something else but you don't think he should even win well and i don't mean to take anything away from the job jeremy o'day did this year right from the start with uh yeah. being handed the reins and then going oh i need a coach i need to fill out a you know coaching staff so he gets he gets uh, craig dickinson he signs cody fajardo all those great moves but if kyle walters doesn't get zach caleros out of toronto they're sunk i mean they don't they don't even win the uh, West Division semifinal in Calgary. They have no chance with, with Strevler and an injured Chris Strevler at that point. That is the single best move all year in the CFL, and it's a move that has gotten his team into the Grey Cup. There's no question. So, yes, did Jeremy O'Day make probably more good moves and get his team into first place? All these things, fantastic. But without that move for Zach Caleros... Uh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are not in Calgary this week. They are dispersed all over North America, wherever their homes are, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are playing for the Grey Cup. That is the single best I, move. Uh, I appreciate the sentiment, but as you know, we have a ton of Winnipeg viewers, and even they couldn't put a dent in the O'Day voting 
Yeah. Now he's he's the GM of the year that's based what a on poll's for. this show's voters, and you're right. That's what a poll is for. Uh, in a minute, we'll talk about the coordinators. I would love to do a coordinator of the year poll, but the problem is on that there are nine teams. Each team has three coordinators, and Twitter only has four options for a poll. We'd have to do a Dustin Nielsen-style bracket. Yeah, it would take Ooh. days to do a bracket Fun for enough. the coordinators. And I'm not saying I'm against it. Off-season. I'm just saying it would take a while. That's an off-season thing, yes. Uh, moving forward, I mentioned the Pats game last night. Jordan, our what does he do here? He's the director. <laughs> is that what he is? Well, well, I'm just new to that's, this. That's TV McMahon thing. out that way. He's in the other wall in this studio. He's they're on, on the, the other. They're side, on the other yeah. wall. Yeah. What does he do here, though? Yeah. What's his title? He's the director, switcher. Yeah. Anyways, he had his camera on a couple at the Pats game last night because the guys that produce this show, IKS, also produce the Pats games. So on the Kiss Cam, which frankly, unfortunately, was the highlight of the game. They're going around, and God bless Regina, some girl in Puma sweats, like, <laughs> climbed on top of her boyfriend and started necking with him. And I'm like, she's the winner! Um, and they were the first one. But they continued. Then there was an older couple that were, like, mauling each other, too. I'm like, get a room! And my daughter's like, oh, my God, shut up. And then they got to this other couple that were clearly on a first date. And awkward. it was so awkward. But so... It was like that crash that you can't take your eyes off, right? And he's wanting to. She's not. And the crowd's like, kiss her. Like the whole place is going. My question to you is, would you kiss on a first date? If you were on the kiss cam, because you know what happens. Finally, they give up on you. They go on to the next couple. Then the next, yeah. then they come back to you two. Come on, kiss. And they never did. Ooh. Oh, man, that's So it was cold. like, were you guys not supposed to be there? Were you sneaking out? <laughs> oh, or that's, like, what's I, that's, that was my first thought. <laughs> it was, it was uh, one of those two not supposed to be there. Right. So, but if it was a first date? You got to. You have to. It would be Come a on. hell of a story you to tell at your wedding. You got to give the crowd what they kiss want. Kiss her on the cheek or something like that if you're worried about, you know, yeah, she, something. She wasn't having it. She wasn't having it. And, and that, what a great way to tee it up, too. You take a girl your first date to the Pats game. You talk to your buddies in the back here who yeah. are the directors. Say, hey, can you put us on the kiss cam? Because I think that could be, you know, like, wait, grease the wheels a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing was, Jordan over here, the young kid, I didn't realize how young he is. He's only 24. He wears a beard to look older because he doesn't want to look so young, but he is young. And I'm looking at him, and he's just gunning him on his camera, right? <laughs> just not taking it off. So I kind of laughed at that. Furthermore, uh, this is the rollout where we talk about all topics for Flooring Superstar. We'll get into serious stuff a little later on. But I was watching the CTV News last night, and the host, the girl on the panel of Regina here, said, disgraced broadcaster Don Cherry has launched a podcast. And I'm like, disgraced? What are you talking about? Because he said you people and took a swipe at immigrants? That's making him disgraced? Is he disgraced? Because I'm thinking about all the little kids now that are watching the Supper News thinking, oh, this newscaster said Don Cherry's disgraced, so he's disgraced himself. He's not disgraced himself. One, he actually went out with his head held high. Do you, do you know many young kids that actually watch the news? Anymore? I have no idea. I would it's, hope it's that they are. No, it's terrible. I right? grew up watching it. Yes, and so did I. We grew up watching James Allen, Johnny Sanderson. Whoever's and watching it that doesn't they have don't an watch. opinion yet. They don't maybe, watch. maybe it's not even about the kids. But anybody that hasn't formed their opinion yet on Don Cherry because of this gal, which she probably didn't even write the script, says disgraced broadcaster Don yeah. Cherry. And, and you know what? That's a disgrace. Not her specifically, but that would be said about Don Cherry. I'm sorry, that's my thoughts. Why are we still you talking don't agree? about Don Cherry? Because they are, Derek. Uh, and everybody is. Yeah, I know. That, I, I'm asking not just us. But Why so, is everybody still talking about Don I Cherry? Know. I'm with you. He should have been gone 10 years ago. He... He has not been relevant in my world for a long time. Um, Nor mine, you know frankly. And, and but. again, I grew up watching him. I loved Don Cherry. I had the, you know, Rock'em Sock'em video. Exactly. Of course, there was a time and a place, but that time and place but that's, is but that's very exactly, dusty and on the shelf these days. Exactly, but that's exactly who Don Cherry's for when you were a kid and watching the Rock'em Sock'em DVDs. And as you get older, he's not for you. It's just like the old cranky guy uh, at the coffee row. When you're old and stuff, it's like, I don't Lynch? care about this. This, but the young kid might want to hear grandpa's stories still, right? So yeah. we're not in his demographic anymore. But I don't think we anybody never were is. for the last ten years. I don't think the kids now. Well, yeah, and that's a completely different I don't think argument. It's relevant to them. Completely different, yeah, argument about whether 
the games sports and the games in well, general yeah. are relevant to kids. But with the headline, I mean, it's it's too often we're just sens- sensationalizing headlines to try and get hits and to try and get likes and Click to try me. and get views. We don't do that here. And for <laughs> we try not to. <laughs> I don't think we. Do. I don't think we do. Of course, but. We're not reading stories. Like, how often are you actually scrolling your Twitter feed and clicking on the link and reading the story? So all you're getting is the headlines, and we're taking that as, as the news. As the news. Yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, you have to understand in our roles and in her role and in CTV's role, that's your responsibility now, that you almost have to tell the whole story in like a five-line headline in a weird way because people aren't reading I, the story. that's how I started this. Don Cherry's not disgraced. Again, right. he went out his way. Why would she say disgraced? And I don't think that she wrote that. That's the problem that I have. Now, I'll just say one more thing, then we'll break, and we're going to bring Jeff Shatler in. But uh, Sunday afternoon, we're at Ballers, ahead of the West Final. We're watching the East Final. And I'm with some buds, and, and my wife's there, and some of her friends. And they're showing the players arriving at the stadium for the West Final. And for the most part, they're in track suits. Yeah. And even last night when the Bombers and Ticats arrived in Hamilton or in Calgary for the Grey Cup, did you see what they're wearing? Like they're dressed like, well, casual would be a compliment for the way they're dressed. Not a fan. It didn't look good. Not so we're talking, not even the coaches. I mean, O'Shea's in jeans. Like yeah. we're, but that's him. So I guess be yourself. That's what we tell everybody here all the time. And I'm interested to ask Jeff Shatler what the rush wear on the road. But we talked in our little group at Ballers about, forget the football players, hockey players all wear suits and ties. And somebody says, oh, they do it in junior and they do it in midget. I said, I've seen peewee teams yeah. walk into a rink 100%. in suits. And my friend Dwayne, who's probably watching Dwayne Johnson, the rock, he <laughs> says, that's Don Cherry. Because Don Cherry is the one that said suit and tie, right? He has had that kind of impact on culture yep. of the game. But the other thing, I was at lunch the other day with Jamie Nugabauer, the Notre Dame Hounds, and we were talking about this <laughs> furthermore. And he said, well, Grapes got it from somewhere because they've been wearing suits yeah. since the Fedora era. So right. it's not just 100%. a Don Cherry thing. He just kept it going and made it a big deal and a, and a part of popular culture and it's happened now in the nba in the nfl it's really big all the teams uh i mean for the broadcast it's there but they do all put it on their social media feeds what are the guys wearing it's become a thing and so for the cfl guys you got to know that you know this is part of it the fans are they gonna don't see care. it they don't care you know it's you know who i will give props to in the cfl luke Luke always dresses up, yeah. post set, business trip, styling, Colin O'Brien's. Luke looks good when he rolls for the uh, for the trips. He's a professional. He, well, and I, I, I appreciate that. And yeah. I, and the reason I note it is because it's the anomaly. It's the it's yeah, rare. It looks like yep. and and you were always a suit guy. I know that yep. as well. Um, I don't know. I just I think it gives an air of professionalism. I like it. I'm not going to sit here and beat down on the guys if, if they're not, because I know that's kind of the, it's kind of the culture. The NBA guys, like you see them it's coming worse. in, they're dressed, some of them are really kooky as far as I'm concerned, but it's, it's their moment to kind of have put that fashion thing their brand. out there. Oh, yeah. And yeah. The hockey players are doing, be all over this. The hockey players are doing it though too. I mean, it's all suit and ties, but now they're trying to change it up. Some guys are wearing, I don't know what, oh, what's tube, different. The, the, the Tyler Bozak, Phil Kessel, the two carry the coffee with, shot. With the suit, like, the not coffee. Tired that right. I don't know. Like it's, or the or the uh, Hockey Canada. Every time there's a Hockey Canada event, we get the shot of them coming off the bus, but, coming off the bus. It's like, a, come like on, right? something different. I know, but that's but that's what the kids Bleh. then want to do. So they all want to wear their suits yeah. and come off the bus together, or the guys want to go and get their coffees and put on the fancy suits, and they want to be those guys. But it's also they want to play hockey and be hockey players. Well, the best one on that was when uh, Austin Matthews in the playoffs, and this is my last point. But last year, do you remember he went into yeah. the rink wearing sweats? And a blazer and a dress coat yep. and a toque and dress pants. And somebody wrote on Twitter or Instagram, that's what I look like when I hear the garbage truck coming down the street and I haven't <laughs> taken my garbage out yet. You're throwing something on to go take the garbage out. Every week when I do that, that's what I look like. Have you like. seen the way the Leafs have been like. playing? They've it's been garbage. Kind of Six like in a row. Truck. You know what? With, which <laughs> I actually wanted to get to. We'll do it later. Quickly? <laughs> okay, yeah. Six losses in a row for his Leafs. The only thought I had, and I said this on Twitter last night, if I not not Babcock. Babcock shouldn't care. It should let it happen, but he can't authorize it. If I'm Tavares, the captain, I'm just taking him out for a big... And, and Shatler might be into this. I'd take him all out on a big bender on the strip last night after <laughs> six losses in a row. <laughs> Old school team bonding, right? Go out. I don't think it's like that anymore. I, I, know I don't it's think not. they go to the crazy They're guys. not. But go to the Sapphire, get into one, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Oh. 
and play guilty and just have some old school team bonding. Yeah, hit the reset button. Are you saying the players should do that or Babcock should do no, that? No, Babcock, because if your coach takes you, no, it kind coach, of defeats the purpose. The coach can't authorize it. The captain, Tavares has Love to leave it, that. Babcock Take him out. On this trip, I hope they got okay. into one last night. Jeff Shatler in the bunker <laughs> next. It's uh, This has been the rollout for Flooring Superstores. Okay. RodPeterson.com on Facebook Live. And catch our podcast wherever you catch your favorite podcast. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit RodPeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.